guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and uh, in this video we're going to be covering part one I guess of the Sector Mechanicum terrain that I'm doing, Sector Mechanicus Mechanicum, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's the uh, the large box of terrain from Games Workshop and in this video we're going to be specifically covering just the uh, the floor plates, so all the bits that make up all the floor sections for the various kits uh, that are available. Now there are a number of different um, box sets that are available for this terrain and there's an awful lot of common parts that are within those um, specifically the floor panels so there are these uh, sort of small square air ones there are rectangular ones there are 90 degree weird shape ones uh, and they all form into the various different box sets um, so what I've done is I've unboxed all of my terrain that I've got which is which is quite a lot um, so that I can batch paint all of the similar sections all together. So, uh, as I said, this one's going to be covering the floor panels and exactly how I've done those. So let's get straight into it. So what I'm going to be doing for this video is just taking one section of these floor panels and just showing you the techniques that I've used and the colours that I've used. And then you can just repeat that across multiple different types of floor panel shape. So as you can see there, this is Vallejo Yellow Olive. And I'm using a, a fairly soft, fairly round-headed sort of terrain brush. Um, I've had this brush for, for countless years. And it's a bit battered, it's a bit worn. Um, I'm not even sure where I got it from, to be honest. It's just one of those brushes that's just appeared in my collection. Um, just applying this fairly lightly in round strokes, uh, focusing on all of the sort of uh, the, the main sections, I guess. Just all over, really. Uh, just in sort of clockwise and anti-clockwise swirls. Now that what that does is leave some of the recesses uh, still dark from the prime of black that I've applied to the uh, to the plastic. So just continually rotating around and making sure that I've got fairly good coverage but as you can see around the, all of the rivets and sections like that uh, it remains dark with the original prime colour. Now I'm also going to do the underside. I'm not going to overly focus on the underside as you won't see it um, but you know some of these if you build these quite high up you will get to see some of the undersides so instead of just leaving it plain and black I'm just going to apply a basic um, coat to it just so that if uh, if it appears on film or you're playing a game and you look underneath it it just doesn't look unpainted so again same kind of thing um, just clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation of the brush fairly softly applied until the colour picks up um, this is sort of a, a dry brushy type technique. It's probably not as dry as uh, if you were really dry brushing some detail. Um, but what it does is it means that it picks up the large flat sections nice and easy uh, and picks up all the raised detail and applies a little bit more colour. It's not fully wet, it's not fully dry, it's somewhere in between. It's a bit of a weird a weird mix, but um, you can see the sort of the, the general effect um, that you're not swamping the thing in one big blob of colour and that the, the, the brushing uh, sort of anti-clockwise and clockwise just picks out all the detail. And once you've done that you can apply it to all the different shapes um, that come in all the different boxes. So there's uh, all these different ones here. There's some other smaller ones that I couldn't fit in the picture as well but exactly the same technique. And you can apply this to any of the integrated floor panels in the other box sets of terrain as well like the, the plasma conduits or the plasma thermic relays whatever they're called that have an integrated platform and you can do exactly the same there. Moving on then, I'm using Vallejo's khaki colour which is a bit darker than bone white um, and then just dry brushing this with a large Games Workshop dry brush. I actually really like the, uh, the Games Workshop dry brushes, I think they do a really good job. Some of the other ones that I've had have had really quite stiff bristles and that sort of gives a scratchy effect um, but I'm finding that the Games Workshop brushes um, have picked up their game, they're not falling apart and they're pretty good quality so uh, that's exactly what I'm using here and then what I'm doing is approaching each of the uh, the edges of the raised detail from different angles so I'm coming in you know from the top the bottom the left and the right and just sort of liberally applying a nice dry brush so that it picks up all of the the raised detail just as a good dry brush does and then once you're done uh, you now get to paint some detail these things are incredibly detailed um, so it might look fairly plain and sort of lattice worked here but in between each of those little lattices are cables, armoured ribbed uh, sections, fans, power generators, all kinds of weird bits that are just sitting in between all of that detail and uh, you can go to town on this or you can just leave it exactly as it was after the dry brush 
depends how obsessive you are about good looking terrain. But for me, I'm fairly obsessive, so uh, you know, I like to play, you know, armies that are well painted on good looking terrain boards rather than uh, anything else. So I am going to go to a reasonable level of detail on this. So you, you could probably go a bit more, but um, you know, there's there's time and effort versus your personal available time to uh, to paint models rather than terrain, which is which is normally what we like to do. So once we've got the uh, the brassy brass section, so I've just picked out sort of armoured cabling and the fan sections and stuff with the brass. And now I'm going to move on to gun metal. Now this is very similar to Lead Belcher from Games Workshop if you're using their colour range. And I'm just going to pick out some of the, the smoother pipe work that's within uh, all the lattice work there. So you can see that I've picked out more of the lattice, uh, all the detail. Now that I've zoomed the camera and you can actually see all of that detail beginning to pop a little bit. Um, as all good cabling uh, should be red, I am applying all the uh, this little thin snaky looking cables and fibre bundles and so on within each of these sections as well. And I'm just going to give those a little coat of red just to uh, apply a little bit more colour. So it does sort of pop a little bit more, it's not all entirely metallic. Um, and then I can just paint all those cables in, in red. Um, and I'm just trying to keep that consistent approach across all of the different sections so that they all look... Uh, as if they belong together. Finally, it's a wash of my old favourite Agrax Earthshade, uh, a Games Workshop uh, shade colour. And all I'm going to do is just slather that all in all the little gaps. If you do get it on any of the raised edges, you can simply wipe it away while it's still wet, nice and easy. And that just sort of tones it down, gives it a bit of depth, uh, and makes it not look completely shiny and brand new. And once you're done, you just do that to every one of your sections that you've got, and you can see all of the sort of the brass work, the metal work and the red work all beginning to sort of show through on the large sections of the terrain here. Um, as I said, it's quite a lot of sections here. It's one, two, three. There's sort of 14 sections in there as I just quickly counted up. So uh, it does take a lot of time and effort if you really want to go to town. But as I said, you could just leave it at the dry brush stage, but just depends how obsessive you are with your terrain. As you can see, I sort of pull it apart and you can see all of the various sections, there's some sort of hatches on this one that are in a different colour. Um, so I've uh, picked those out in, in metallic. And then the, sort of the fan sections I've kept um, to a brassy colour. So there we go guys, that's going to wrap this video up. So we've covered here the floor sections for the Sector Mechanicus terrain. Uh, the next videos will include all the side panels, all sort of the barricade bits, the the railings and so on. Um, there's some cables and other bits and pieces. I'm not going to specifically do a video on cables because they're just cables. Um, and then the actual bodies and chassis of uh, the actual uh, ferromantic incinerators and so on. Some of the larger bits that, that make up the uh, terrain kits. So they're the bit more unique parts that form the uh, form the kits. Um, so hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. I hope you uh, like the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I shall catch you guys on the next video. Cheers.